Alrighty, that's enough of that. How are y'all doing on tonight? Um, hello, everybody. Before I go too much further, will you please let me know if you can hear me clearly by typing a one in the chat if you can. Um, if you can hear me but not so clearly, uh, type a seven and let me know. How is everybody doing on tonight? Okay, hey, Alicia, thank you. Okay, thank you. I see the ones coming in. Okay. I appreciate it. Um, so before we get too deeply into this, I want to thank uh, Patriot Wolf, who I don't even know if Patriot Wolf is still here um, because they came much earlier. It was um, over an hour ago to drop this super chat. And when I log into uh, StreamYard, if I log in before I start a show, the comments that are there early, they disappear. And so I want to just take time out and acknowledge the uh, super chat. Thank you uh, so much. Uh, it says endless blessings always. Shalom. I don't know if you're here right now, but thank you. Uh, so let's see. I got a member in the house. Hey, Alicia. Thank you for being here. Thank you, everybody. I want to say a few hellos and then get right to it. Um, hey, Volvo. Is it Volvo to love? Volvo to love. Hello. And Felicia, hello. And S, please, how are you doing? Love the hair. And uh, hi, is it Jay Brooks? Hello. And Eddie Thorne. Okay, let's get into it, y'all. So what we're doing is um, kind of, kind of a special request, kind of, but not exactly, um, because one of the viewers, and I'm pretty sure that it was Clarissa, uh, is her name had asked me about doing um, kind of like a deep dive into Curtis Graves. And I told her that I don't think that he's really worth doing a deep dive into, um, but I said, let's talk about it. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Curtis Graves, and I really literally, honestly, only truly know and remember this man's name because I watch Real Housewives of Potomac. He is the father of one of the cast members of Real Housewives of Potomac, uh, Giselle Bryant. Let me know if you watch the show. And I'm just going to uh, drop his photo in here so you all can see who we're talking about tonight. Um, so this is Curtis Graves, the man on the left. Obviously, the other one is the more well-known <laughs> uh, Martin Luther King. So uh, Curtis Graves was... They say, some people will say celebrated civil rights activist. Um, he did some sit-ins and yes, you know, I think that he gets a lot more credit than he deserves as far as civil rights is concerned. Uh, most of his career was spent working in, I guess maybe it was like the civil rights division um, or maybe like uh, something that would be considered something like an affirmative action division of um, NASA. But he has, you know, a legacy. It doesn't, um, it, it pales in comparison to the legacy of Barbara Jordan, um, who I did the story about when I did the story about Curtis. Um, so for those of you who watch the show, um, the reason that I did the video about Curtis Graves was that there were some issues going on on the show. So Curtis Graves has a daughter who is on the cast 
this is his daughter, Giselle Bryant. Um, Giselle Bryant, you can see she looks a lot like her father. Um, Giselle Bryant has some issues with some of the women on the show. And I mean, she's kind of a nasty person. It's a reality TV show. But I could not help but notice that a lot of her heavier issues seem to be with women who are of a darker complexion, a much darker complexion than she is. You can see that she's, you know, uh, got fair skin, relatively fair skin for a black person. So this cast member, uh, Dr. Wendy Osefo, um, who is a Nigerian American, um, is uh, one of the people who Giselle constantly has issues with. They are both sorority sisters. They are both uh, members of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. And um, seemed like things were off to a good start when Wendy first joined the cast. Giselle is an OG. She's been there since season one. Wendy joined in a later season. I can't recall exactly. Maybe it was season six. That seems right. But anyway, so they hit it off and whatever, right? It is what it is. But since then, they've had issues with each other. And um, there were things that Giselle would say that might sound racially charged, or if you use the word colorist, um, towards Wendy Osefo. And then I just can't help but notice that when she has a problem with women who seem to be of a darker brown complexion, it's always a more serious problem than she has with other women on the cast. And her language is a lot more vicious towards those women. And so my thought was that she must have learned this from somewhere. And so I just went looking for something. And they say that if you go looking for something that you'll find it. I knew about her father. They've talked about her father on the show. Her father um, kind of like was highlighted on one of the episodes because the cast took a trip to New Orleans where um, Giselle's family's roots are and they visited the uh, plantation, uh, you know, where her family, you know, was enslaved. So I wrote, I did a story about it. So I'm going to go over the video and just with in mind that a lot of the times, uh, and y'all see, I've done a, a number of videos about civil rights leaders, and I always question what, what, you know, like what was his real intent? Did he really care about black people? So often they seem to care about only black men when they are out there, quote unquote, fighting the power. And then sometimes not even necessarily about um, the upliftment of the race as a whole, or even just themselves, but just to be able to gain uh, integration, aka proximity to whiteness. So is this really about black pride and all these things? I don't know. So here's the video that I have, and I'll just be playing it, pausing it, and um, uh, talking about it. So this is my video. So that is, again, um, on the left, the man who we're talking about today, Curtis Graves. That is Giselle uh, his daughter in the middle. You can see they. She looks. She looks like her father. And then it is um, Barbara Jordan, uh, the the <laughs> revered Texas politician um, who he took it upon himself to call the Aunt Jemima of Texas politics. So let's get into it. Hey everybody, this one is going to be super informal. I have been watching so many YouTubers review the Real Housewives of Potomac reunion. Are you all able to hear my video? For some reason, it sounds a little low to me. Um, let me know if you can hear my video and I'll just keep playing. And expressing their disappointment at Giselle Bryant, a cast member who many see as colorist. Viewers have expressed a lot of surprise and disappointment at the amount of vitriol that she seems to have for a fellow cast member, Dr. Wendy Osefo, who is a dark-skinned woman. Now. The viewers seem to be surprised because Giselle's father, Curtis Graves, was a civil rights activist in the 1960s. It's often mentioned that he worked alongside Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And the notion is that because of her father's history in civil rights, that Giselle should be a better person when it comes to black women. Okay, so I want to talk about that because that was something that I would see over and over on social media. Like I would, uh, you know, look at the Twitter, you know how people uh, tweet 
uh, watch basically shows uh, and it'll get the show, the show trending while it's live. So I would see a lot of the comments and a lot of the comments um, were uh, people saying things like, um, oh, you know, Giselle, she should know better. She should not talk to black women like that. She should be ashamed. Her father was a leading civil rights activist. Her father was this, her father was that. And I just have to throw out there that literally the bar is set so low for black male leadership that all that a guy has to do is have a picture like this, literally a picture sitting next to Dr. Martin Luther King. And all of a sudden you are the world's biggest civil rights activist, but we'll get into his activism. Uh, let me see. Um, let me go to the comments and see what y'all are saying before we go on. Um, hi, uh, Yolanda. Let's see. Uh, Yolanda says, just that was cool with Dr. Wendy back on season five because Wendy praised her beauty and she didn't care for Monique Samuels. But on season six, Dr. Wendy checked Giselle about her husband. Yeah. Um, and so that's one of the things that Giselle typically does is she'll come for the people who appear to be in, um, you know, happy marriages or whatever. But yeah. And Wendy, look, I have to give credit where credit is due. Wendy has herself to blame for this because she walked onto the scene kissing Giselle's butt. And I'm sure that that's the kind of treatment Giselle has expected from women who look like Wendy. And Wendy gave her exactly what she wanted. So Wendy went in there, you know, willing to play that part. And when the tables got turned on herself, you know, she didn't like it. And so uh, to me, there are no victims in any of this situation. That's just how I feel about it. But um, yeah, Wendy definitely played her role. Uh, let's see. Hi, IMO. Uh, let's see. IMO says, hello, you are so correct about Giselle. She's definitely colorist and doesn't like the darker women who are actually wives on the show is what I believe. Yeah, she doesn't seem to like anyone who's in um, a happy marriage, regardless of their skin tone, but she certainly has it out for the darker women. Um, and I do think that part of that is because, you know, when Giselle's husband was cheating on her, he was cheating on her with dark skinned women. I think that dark skinned women are his sexual preference. That doesn't make it a win for dark skinned women, because if he truly valued dark skinned women, he would have married one as well. So even he should be checked because, you know, he'll, you know, apparently the way that he looks at it or the way that he's lived his life up to a point is that the woman who has the more European features like Giselle has is the prize and is the one who's deserving of the ring, even if he's going to be a lying, cheating, horrible husband to her. But, you know, the darker skinned women are for fun in the bed. And I'm sure that for someone like Giselle, that was a hard pill for her to swallow. And so it does seem like she just kind of lashes out at all of the um, darker women who come on the show. So let me go back to it. Now, y'all know here on this channel, if you've been on this channel for a while, I question all of those men who were civil rights leaders. I don't really believe that a lot of them were really about what they say they were about. And I have to believe that perhaps Giselle got her nasty attitude about dark skinned black women from watching her own father. I'm going to show you this article from the Austin American that was printed in 1972 and just read some excerpts from it. The article is called Senator Jordan's Chances for Congress Are Good. Okay, I will get into that. I want to say some more hellos. Hey, Country Mama. Country Mama, how are you doing? I hope that you're feeling better. Let us know that you were a little under the weather the last time that we saw you. And my crafty styles, she's also a member, but she's on her other channel. Hey, Tammy. That's Tammy's Passions, if y'all are used to seeing her. She's a member and a moderator uh, as well. But uh, if you're into crafting, go check out my crafty styles. Uh, and if you have a channel, feel free to shout yourself out. That's something that we've always done um, on this channel. I haven't mentioned it, but that's something that we've always done. And uh, we can keep that going. That's never a problem for me. And the man who was running against Senator Barbara Jordan was Giselle's father, who ended up losing to Barbara Jordan. And in a Texas Monthly article that was written about him after... Real Housewives of Potomac started airing on Bravo, he admitted that he still didn't really have anything nice to say about Barbara Jordan. 
So you tell me, is it just me or does that sound like Giselle's attitude towards Wendy Osefo, who really just beat Giselle at a game of words, being able to more wittingly insult Giselle after Giselle came for Wendy's marriage two seasons ago? Well, yeah. So Wendy told her off and here we are a season later and Giselle is trying to ice Wendy out from cast recordings while well, she's successfully doing that and still expressing that she doesn't like Wendy. Maybe, just maybe, Giselle gets it from her daddy. So here uh, is a little bit from this article. Here we go. So okay, and you see that he's called the agitator. Hey, Savannah, we haven't seen you in a while. How are you doing? And hi, uh, Bratz Doll and Chrissy C. Hey, Chrissy. Um, and Keisha, how are you doing? Um, let's see here. So yeah, this is just... This is just crazy. This is crazy to me. But yeah, he was definitely an agitator. And it's crazy because I think that that's the role that Giselle plays on Real Housewives of Potomac. She's an agitator. Senator Barbara Jordan, whose record of firsts for her race is rapidly becoming legendary in Texas politics, seems certain to be the first black woman ever elected to Congress from the South. So keep in mind that Giselle's father had some firsts of his own as well. But here we go back to the article. But to get there, she must defeat or tolerate, according to how you measure it, challenges from two black men in the Democratic primary and two Republicans. Miss Jordan, 36, has become the undisputed political leader of Houston blacks since she was elected to the Texas Senate in 1966. The district's 476,000 population is 42% Black, 45% White, and 12% Mexican American. But the very makeup of the district itself and how it came to pass has become the top issue used against Ms. Jordan by her closest competitor, Representative Curtis Graves. That now this is insane because he was her closest competitor. But he was like nowhere near. Like that was a distant second. But you'll hear. Um, hi, Eddie. I'm not sure what you mean. All of the important civil leaders of the civil rights movement area. I guess I'm sure. You, I guess you mean era. Were married to dark. I guess dark skin or light skin women. But I don't know what that. I don't know. I'm not sure what you mean by that. I don't know. Hey, Fred. How are you doing? Okay. Uh, let's get it. That is Giselle's father. Graves, 31, who calls Miss Jordan the Aunt Jemima of Texas politics, is given little chance of winning the Democratic Party primary race for the congressional seat, but he is giving Miss Jordan a daily irritant. And by the way, the article that the Texas Monthly wrote about him, it's called The Agitator. That's how they describe him. And is that not how you can describe Giselle on the cast of Real Housewives of Potomac? She okay, so let's just get into the fact that this black man is calling a black woman Aunt Jemima uh, for anyone to hear that. And the racial stereotypes that come along with Aunt Jemima. Um, hi, Nicole S. How are you doing? So, um... Actually, if you look at my community tab post today, I posted a picture. Everything that I do is somewhat intentional, not necessarily all, you know, content, content as far as video content. But um, the photo that I posted is of, uh, it's a 1963 photo of a little white girl. She's eight years old and she's teaching the house cook how to ride a bike. And the house cook is a black woman. And she's dressed in what would be considered typical um, typical Aunt Jemima garb, for lack of a better phrase. So Aunt Jemima is somebody, you know, we've seen the pancake box. Uh, she's flipping pancakes. She's smiling. Um, it might conjure up images of uh, the character Hattie McDaniel played in Gone with the Wind. Uh, just, oh, yes, Amasa. Oh, yes, I want to make these some good old pancakes and that's what Aunt Jemima is. And uh, thank you, uh, Savannah. I appreciate the super chat. We thank all uh, of you all for contributing uh, to the channel. I truly, truly appreciate it. Um, but that's the, that's the imagery that that conjures up. And so this guy who is, you know, supposed to be this revered legislator, that's the best that he could come up with because he was being bested by a woman who 
he didn't think was worthy of the title that he wanted, who was worthy of the office that he wanted. But what do we do? We resort to name calling as we're running for Congress. And when I tell you that that man had to have been the blueprint for Giselle Bryant, just think of some dirty name to call him. Think of something, you know, it's not like I'm actually saying the N word, so you can't really throw racism on me. And hey, I'm black, but yeah, she's the Aunt Jemima of Texas politics. That's heavy. That's heavy to me. But I want to know what you all think about it. Let me play some more of my video. She is an agitator. She stirs up trouble. Um, so maybe again, maybe just maybe she gets it from daddy. Back to the article. He says, she traded your black Senate seat for her own seat in Congress. Graves exhorts audiences deep in the black side of Houston. He has some facts on his side. Lieutenant Governor Ben Barnes, with whom Miss Jordan has had a lasting political friendship, did draw last year's redistricting bill to ensure her a safe congressional district and her old seat in the Texas Senate was redrawn in such a manner that most observers agree it is impossible for a black to be elected. Then Graves moves even more, stinging in his attack. Quote, redistricting was an attempt to cut down any black man from ever having any power. I say that the white man has used our women too long. Now they are using them in Congress. In okay, so this is something that I want to hit on because that's another common talking point that I hear from, you know, the black civil rights leader, the pro-black men or whatever. Oh, white men have been using our women, you know, in the way that he said it. They've been doing it for far too long. But the only reason that they have a problem with it is because they think that they should be the only ones who are allowed to use black women. Rather than black women just being able to be, you know, autonomous and, you know, have our own say about what we're going to do and if we allow ourselves to be used, it's not the, the, the problem is not that someone is using black women. The problem is that someone other than them is using black women. So you can't, on one hand, tell me that you have this problem with white men using black women and expect me to take you seriously when the moment that you get upset that you're losing an election by a huge margin to a black woman, the first thing that you can think to do is to run around to whomever will listen and call her the Aunt Jemima of Texas politics. He's a clown. Hi, Julius. How are you doing? And Ashley, how are you doing? Yes, he did pass away recently. Um, he, he did pass away, uh, rather recently. So let's go. End quote. So it sounds like he's upset that he couldn't use Barbara Jordan. She did make some savvy political connections. She was a businesswoman. She worked her way, worked her jelly, made some friendships. She was a politician. Um, he kind of got his political start, uh, as a protester. And it's even remarked in one of the articles that I read about him that every protester is not a politician. Mm, every protester is not a politician. Um, hi, Jasmine. How are you doing? Thank you so much for coming and joining us today. I'm glad that you're liking what you're hearing. Um, so, yeah, th that's the other thing. So Barbara Jordan she was respected on both sides of the aisle. And that's why she was able to do what she was able to do. Uh, she was a true politician. Curtis Graves came up in the era of, uh, you know, sit-ins and, you know, let's, you know, start a riot and all that shit. And, you know, not to say that those things don't have a place um, in, you know, maybe helping to move the needle, but, Laws are made, you know, in Congress. Uh, laws are are made, you know, in those offices. And so, yeah, he he was good at making a scene. And I guess, you know, he might have, you know, been okay with infamy and known that if I call this black woman the Aunt Jemima of uh, Texas politics, it might be seen. But when I tell you, I just have to believe. I am inclined to believe. I have no choice but to believe that the way that he got around in politics 
was the same way that he told Giselle that she needs to get around in her daily life. And it is well reflected on that show. I can't say that that's what he did. But even if he didn't tell her, I think that she learned by example. I think that she followed in his footsteps, you know, whether it's something that she would want to admit or not. Um, I don't know how to say this name. I sat, I sat, I sat too. <laughs> I'm so sorry. How are you doing? And uh, hi, fashionista. Yeah, rest in peace, but he was a colorist. Thank you for that. And um, you're very pretty. Thank you for that. Two things can be true at one time, right? Rest in peace, right? Because, uh, you know, that's the thing that when people get upset about the stories that I do sometimes, oh, let that man sleep in his grave. Let's, I'm not disturbing anybody's grave. Rest in peace. However, <laughs> you know, you live to kind of fucked up life sometimes. So we're just going to talk about those things. Hey, Island Girl, how are you doing? Okay, let's get it. So he's kind of like good at being like Giselle, running his mouth and making a scene. There's obviously more to the article, but the words of Curtis Graves sound to me like the words of a man who is bitter about being bested by a woman who could play his game better than he did. And she has the nerve to be dark skinned on top of it. What do you think? Let me know. This article is from 1972. Giselle was born in 1970. But it seems like he never let go of his grudge against Barbara Jordan. And if he would say that about a black woman, like say that she's Aunt Jemima, the Aunt Jemima of anything to the press, I can only imagine what he would have said behind closed doors. You know, kitchen table talk. Let me know what you think about it. Yeah, so that's something else that I want to get into because, look, we all have a way that we speak publicly. And then there are things that, you know, I don't care who you are. There um, are things that you're going to say behind closed doors around people you're more comfortable with that other people, you know, might say, wow, that's crazy. Or it could get you canceled if you, you know, talk that way publicly. And so... Yeah, to that, I say, <laughs> I think that if he would call her Aunt Jemima in open public, openly in public, what on God's green earth do you think that he's saying behind closed doors about women who look like Barbara Jordan, about women who look more like Wendy Osefo than his daughter or than, you know, the mother of his daughter? Uh, who's also a very fair woman. Just a thought. And so I have to believe that if this is who he was in public, that he was someone probably a little bit darker in private. And that is likely what gave Giselle the entitlement that she feels um, over darker skinned women. Now, again, I have to say, Wendy... She came in, she played her part, and she played right into it. Came in and was kissing Giselle's butt from one cheek to the other. And so I don't feel sorry for Wendy in this. I just look at them both and say, that there's a problem. I, I look at that cast and I, it's actually quite disgusting to me watching how the, um, the brown girls browner girls who are more far more accomplished than Giselle and Robin for sure and Ashley come in to this show kissing their butts because they want to be down with the quote unquote in girls Candace and Wendy are far more accomplished far more educated than them but still I just want to be chosen by Giselle and so Wendy got what she deserved don't get it wrong. That's not what I'm saying. Um, she rolled herself out as a doormat and Giselle walked all over her. But what I'm saying is, is that I think that that's a learned behavior. And I think that with Curtis Graves making that statement in open public, um, that he was probably saying even worse behind closed doors for that kitchen table talk. So let me... Um, acknowledge another super chat and I'm going to drop the link um, in just a moment 
And we're going to only go for an hour, you guys, because um, I was a little late because I have to um, finish. I was writing for part two of my Benjamin Guggenheim story. And I got to get back to that. Thank you so much, Amber. I appreciate the super chat. Thank you. I'm glad that you are loving the content. Thank you all for the super chats that I've uh, gotten so far from you all tonight. I truly, truly appreciate it. Um, I want to run through some of the comments and make sure I say hi to everybody because not a ton, a ton of people in here, but um, I want to get through some of these comments. Um, okay, so Eddie, the comment that was poorly written earlier, I think that maybe he's clarifying. He says all of the leaders carried enough, all the leaders carried enough to about black women to marry black women. I guess all the leaders, all the leaders cared enough about black women to marry black women. What if they married white women? What if? So here's the thing. You can marry whoever you want to marry. No, that's not even what this is about. This is about respect. Marry whoever you want to marry. Marry a dark skinned woman, marry a light skinned woman, marry a man. But if you have respect, for women, if you have respect for dark skinned women, then you'll talk to them like you have respect to them. Um, when, especially when you're in public, especially when you're in public. So um, maybe it'll help you out if I drop the link. Because if you want to come and talk to me about it, you're welcome to. Writing doesn't seem to be your forte. Come and talk to me. Um, I would love to hear what you have to say. Um, um, cause perhaps I'm misunderstanding your comment. I don't think that I am, but maybe I am. Let's see. I want to get through some more of these comments, but there's a link in case anyone wants to talk to me about anything. And, uh, whether you agree with me or disagree with me, it doesn't matter. We've got 28 minutes to go. Before I shut it down, um, I'm just going through your your comments. Um, let's see. Yolanda says, I supported Candace Dillard Bassett when she read Giselle all the way like a book from cover to cover at season seven reunion for the allegations she made against her husband. Um, I did to a degree because, again, Candace is another one just like Wendy. Candace came there wanting all of um, the approval that she could find from Giselle. Candace sat in on Giselle's meetings when Giselle was planning and plotting against other people's husbands, and she was stupid to think that she wouldn't be next. Candace is a fool. Candace, like Wendy, thought that once Monique was gone, that they would all get to be buddy buddies with her too. And no, you're the new target now. I've gotten rid of that dark skinned woman. Now it's you. Candace is a fool. But yeah, still, Giselle should not have lied on her husband. Um, and Ashley's stupid, funny-looking friend. Ugh. Um, she shouldn't have done it either. Yeah, sounds awful to me too, Savannah. Let's see here. So Marcy Lynn uh, says, let's not diminish the work people put in. Ridiculous. So I don't know. Maybe I'm... Uh, I don't know if you're like referring to... My my thoughts on Curtis Graves, but feel free to take the link. The link is down there if you want to talk about it, because um, what I'm talking about is his colorist ways towards black women. If he's there supposedly to represent black people, then that should include black women. But if you're talking about your political opponent in this fashion, how for black people how much for black people can you really be? Black people includes black women. Did Giselle get her colorist ways as some of us see it? Did she get that from her father? Despite the fact that a lot of people say that because her father was this civil rights activist, that she ought to know better. Yeah, on this channel, we question and we look at civil rights leaders sideways with the side eye all day, every day. So let me drop the link again. The link is here. In case anyone wants to come and talk, agree or disagree, as long as we keep it civil, it's fine. 
Um, no name calling, no cussing. <laughs> but there, uh, if y'all want to say anything, um, and I'm just going through the comments. Hopefully, someone will come and talk to me before time runs out. So Marcy says, is this about Curtis or Giselle, a reality show? Sounds like a focus to go after Giselle nonsense. Um, the link is there, Marcy. If you want to come and talk to me and get some clarity, um, come and talk to me. So if you weren't here at the beginning, like I was saying, this is an older video that I did. If you were listening, the context is there. I made this video during the reunion of Real Housewives of Potomac. And I looked for the information on her father because of the way that Giselle was treating her darker castmates. I think that it's like all pretty much laid out. But the link is there. If you want to come and talk to me, come and talk to me. Um, and maybe we can reach an understanding. But no, this is not uh, at this moment about Giselle. We're talking about her dad because he died. And again, like I mentioned at the beginning of this, this was a request. So this isn't even my bailiwick, so to speak. Uh <laughs> I made the video and I'm talking about it again. It's repurposed content. So let's see here. Um, yeah, look, IMO, that, that's the way I see Giselle. I do see her to be as a nasty person. And I do believe that she had to have gotten it from somewhere. You know, I don't know. But uh, like I said, agree or disagree. I'm just, hey, once I get through these comments, uh, I'm going to just, you know, go finish writing because I have to get out another video. Thank you so much. Um, a lady 747, uh, says I love how you cover overlooked facts in history. Um, that help explain our present. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I do feel like, um, taking a look back does kind of help explain some things that we see now and gives context to things that we see now. Um, and I think that really more than anything, it proves that when I do go back and look at stuff, I think that it proves that people have not changed, that people don't change. Whatever our parents and grandparents tell us about how, you know, they were so reserved or they were so conservative or there were things that we don't understand you kids doing that we would never do in public, you know, maybe in public, but you all did the same things. The celebrities that you all idolize, that kids idolize today, they did the same stuff. And so for me, it's just like a fun way to people watch, but to go back in time and people watch. And it kind of just proves that, in my opinion, at least, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Um, so let's see. I'm... Uh, looking for some comments. Let's see here. Okay, so I think I'm caught back up where we were. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going down y'all's comments. Again, the link is in the chat if y'all wanna come and talk to me. Um, a lot of these leaders went against white men to access uh, they're white women. Look at Martin Luther King's history and look at uh, his almost white wife. The purpose was clear from the jump. Now, I will say, I don't see Coretta Scott uh, as somebody who was almost white. Um, and I think that I understand what you're saying. Um, I don't see her as someone who was almost white. Um, but y'all know I did the video on Martin Luther King, uh, whose first love was a white woman. And and even I, I, I get what you're saying in your comment, but these black men were not going against white men. They had to wait for white men to allow them to have access to white women. They weren't fighting them. Not really. They weren't fighting. Um, but I mean, I get what you're saying, but, eh, you know, I think it's a little bit deeper than that. But I know that you, you know, you've got a comment, so you have know, not a ton of space to really maybe express everything that you want to express, which is why I always drop the link when I do these live streams. Um, 
let's see here. Yolanda says, uh, back on season one, all right, Chef P, Giselle questioned Katie about her blackness. I guess, but as they progressed, she herself has revealed her color. Yeah, and look, pro-black, whatever. To me, this isn't about a question of pro-blackness. Um, it's a question of respect. If you And you're saying that you're fighting for black people, and pro-black can mean a lot of different things to a lot of people. But if you're saying that you're fighting for black people, at the very least, it seems, you'd be able to show some respect. And I mean, show some respect to a woman who is way above you, Curtis Graves. She's elevated above you in everything that you're trying to accomplish. But because you were losing by an over 80% margin, oh, she's Aunt Jemima. <laughs> Like, what kind of a five-year-old does that? Yeah. I don't know. Fred says uh, he seems like someone who dislikes his own kind. I think that he certainly, look, I, I'm only questioning how he felt about his own women. Because, you know, they all love to get next to Martin Luther King and take a picture. And that makes them iconic civil rights activists, you know, all of a sudden. But, yeah. Anyhow. Hmm. So, let's see. Yeah, I see where she gets it from, too. Chrissy uh, says, it's apparent that he had nothing to bring to the table other than call his opponent Aunt Jemima. Right, I mean, like, she was crushing it. She was, yeah... She was killing him. I believe that she had an 82% lead over him. And, you know, so he's sharing less than 20% of the vote with like three or two other opponents. So there were four, I believe, total running. I think that he had, I want to think, somewhere between 11 and 4% of the vote. I can't recall. And I might have even just heard it <laughs> listening back to my own video. But anyway, um, okay, great. I said your name correctly. And then I don't remember how I said it. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, Lord. Marcy, I'm not putting any more of your comments on the screen. If you want to come up here and talk, I drop the link. Uh, I, I'm not reading any more of your ridiculous comments. Um, but there, I dropped the link again. So if you don't want to be a keyboard gangster, come here and have a conversation with me. Um, you're welcome to. So let's see here. Nobody wants to come and say anything. Cause look, I, I can end it y'all. <laughs> I can end it. Oh, Hey, Jewel. I didn't see you. How are you doing? Hey, Joel. Did y'all come for the live stream on Sunday um, for our Jeopardy game? Joel is the one who gave me that idea. Let's see. Hi, Vicky. So if light skin is fair, is dark skin unfair? Um, <laughs> is that supposed to be an existential question? I'm not sure. Um, that's just another way to say light. Uh, not not fair in those terms. I don't know if that's a joke, but that's a different context for fair. Yeah, it seems like learned behavior to me as well. Yeah, um, Island Girl, I do see a lot of um, that happening uh, in the reality show world. Now, I don't watch Basketball Wives. I've never watched not even one episode of Basketball Wives. But um, since you said reality shows in general, um, I remember hearing all of the stuff that was going on with the, the lady. What was her name? O.G.? Is that what is that what they were calling her? 
OG. But I remember that just because I would see so much on Twitter to have never seen one episode. Like I felt like I had seen enough. Like I felt like, hey, I'm ready to stop watching the show. And I haven't even watched one episode yet. Like this show's canceled to me. But I saw so much and it was so bad. Um, but yeah, it's it's a mess. It's a mess. There she is. Hey, Joelle. How are you doing? How are you doing? Let's see here. Yes, they did. Uh, Monique, Wendy, and Candace. And it is it, just shameful to watch. It was just shameful to watch. And that's why I'm like, hey, I can't be too upset with, um, you know, with anybody when they treat them badly because they came in there just begging for that validation. And they got it for a second. But then, you know, when it was over, it was over. And they should have all seen it coming. Uh, IMO says that uh, I can't watch the show anymore because the brown girls act like they are inferior to the lighter women. Breaks my heart. Yeah, they do. They really do. They come on there just looking for validation from Giselle. Giselle, of all people, you know, um, the two, let's say the two brown women who are left on the cast, they appear to be happy in their marriages, you know, Um but they certainly, you know, are both more educated than anyone else on the cast. Wendy, for sure, did not let us forget about her four degrees. And now Candace has her master's. Um, and Candace is really, and I, I'm not a fan of Candace. I'm not a fan of anyone on the show. Isn't that sad? I like Karen the most. Karen is my favorite person. But all of them have, like, extremely unlikable ways at times. Karen least than it, you know, less than anyone else, I'll say, in my opinion. But um, Candace, lover or hater, she's really using the platform for what it's for. And she's really promoting herself and getting other work, getting her acting career going, getting her music career going. I don't hear her talk about her, her bundles of <laughs> business anymore, but she seems to be doing well. Now, Candace's husband, mm, that's a story for a another live stream which we've already covered but it is what it is uh let's see here um a lady says that it's only going to get worse as giselle ages forcefully and wendy ages gracefully now i'm gonna have to take i'm gonna have to say i disagree with you there if wendy stops with the plastic surgery yes Giselle is a pretty woman. You know, I, I think that all the women on the show are attractive enough. I don't think anybody's getting kicked out of the bed, maybe except for Robin. And that's only because, you know, who knows what. Anyway, she and Juan have a very strange relationship. But all the ladies are attractive enough. I think that Giselle um, in her heyday was probably often compared to Vanessa Williams, who I think is very pretty. Um, Giselle. Uh, the way that she aged shames Karen, though, is strange to me, considering that she is like the next oldest one after Karen. And Karen looks a hell of a lot younger than Giselle. Now, Wendy, I think, is only appearing to age so gracefully now because she's, one, younger than Giselle, but she's doing a lot of work. Wendy has gotten a lot of work done since she joined that cast. And she does not look the same if she doesn't stop, she's going to start, you know, getting to that. Y'all know, like, you get to that point in plastic surgery where you start to look less than human. And she's, if she doesn't stop, it's, she, she could be headed for something bad. I hope that she just finds her a way to be satisfied with what she's got going on. I hope that she, for, for her own sake, I hope that she finds that. Um, <laughs> what he needed an editor for that comment, Fred. You are so crazy. Fred is the person who actually does fill out my complaint form. <laughs> uh, when you know, well, it's actually the butt hurt form. So, if my content makes your little booty hurt, there is a form that you can fill out and you can email it to Taiwan at tysetwithtyset.com and it will go to my administrator. 
people, she will file it away in the trash. So um, I don't know if uh, our little friend here who was all tight is, is uh, I don't know if she's still here, but you do have the option to file a complaint and maybe you can uh, get what you're looking for that way. So let's see here. Hey, Lexi. So the apple doesn't fall from the tree. No, it does not. It does not. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you, Jasmine. Jasmine's always got my back. And I'm just now seeing Jasmine. But yeah. Yeah, there is a complaint form for you to fill out there, hun, hun bun. If my content angers you, that's that's Indy. So if y'all want to fill out a complaint form because Indy's drinking is too loud. I don't know if y'all can hear it. I have my headphones on, but I swear she only wants to drink water in this room when I am <laughs> on a live stream. She has water all over the place, but she wants to come right here and have her sip at the most inopportune time for me. Anyway, Island Girl says she learned it from her father. Yeah, I, I agree. Mm -hmm. Oh, Andrea's here. Hey, Andrea. Says chat trolling is not a good look. No, it's not. It, it's it's especially a bad look when I offer you the link, you know, because I expect, look, I'm, I can be really opinionated by some things. And I know that my opinion is not always a popular one. And so it can be like kind of difficult to like just be in the chat typing a bunch of things when you disagree with me, especially like if you disagree with every point I'm making. So you're just typing away. Oh, uh, no, you're wrong. Blah, blah, blah. So look, here's the link. I made it easy for you. Come up here and talk to us. Let's just have a discussion. If y'all have been here with me, you know, y'all know that I've, I've like, I don't chop off people's heads when they come up here and they disagree with me. We listen. Now, unless they're coming up here being super disrespectful, because that happens too, right? Where we'll get someone as soon as they come on, well, look, yeah, bitch, you know, well, then, look, you can't expect for me to be respectful to someone who comes up here with that kind of energy. But if someone just disagrees, we, we hear them out. Because what I always say is that when I'm dropping the link, especially when I'm talking about something that I know that people will feel completely differently from the way that I do, come up here and say what you have to say. There's likely somebody in the chat who's even too afraid to just type it because they don't even want me to put their comment on the screen. Just come here and say what you have to say. It's just discussion. Uh, contrary to, you know, what some people believe, after I, you know, I, I don't really give a damn <laughs> about these people. After I make my video, I make my money, I go on to the next story. So like I was writing before I got here, I was writing the script for the next video. When I log off of here, I'm going to get back to writing the script for the next video. I'm not going to be thinking about Giselle or her dad or Wendy. <laughs> I don't care. Um, that And this isn't even, like I said, my forte. I just happen to be able to find an historic story to go in with the Real Housewives of Potomac situation when it was airing. And the video did really, really well on TikTok and got some traction and got some people talking. And so that was cool, but it was just like, oh, okay, well, I get to do something that I do while this, you know, pop culture history moment is going on. But no, like after that, I'm, I'm, I don't have a, a picture of Curtis Graves or, <laughs> or Giselle, you know, uh, Bryant, you know, in my den uh, with a target on it for target practice. I, I truly don't care. We're just having a discussion. Let's see here. Yeah. Yeah. Look, uh, everything is fair game. All of those girls. And it's easier for me because to watch Real Housewives of Potomac because I don't like anyone. So it's just like, I'm just watching a shape fest. Y'all all tear each other apart. I don't like any of you. If somebody gets a good, you know, lick in, then I'm just going to laugh about it. You know, I don't care. I don't have any dogs in that race uh or any horses in that race and that's not to call women animals you know what i'm saying i don't have a dog in the fight it, it's just it's just all entertainment for me if i watch it <laughs> oh gosh oh let's see here yeah. oh joelle's so sweet she called me gorgeous she calls me gorgeous and look at her let's see here 
Um, and so, yeah, so this is, again, why I wasn't even getting into the pro-Black. Um, I wasn't going there with it because I know that a lot of people have different opinions on what pro-Black is um, and how the sky has fallen. For some people, they'll say you can't be pro-Black and sleep white or nearly white. Um, and look, and everyone's entitled to feel how they feel. So this is not for me to say that the way that they feel is wrong, that this person feels is wrong. For some people, the you know cornerstone of pro-Blackness is creating a Black family. So that means a Black, you know, father, Black mother, Black children, however many there are going to be. For some people, that's what it is. Um, and so like this wasn't even that. My thing is, if you're saying, though, that you're fighting for Black people, you're saying you're fighting for civil rights, then that should include Black women. And I think that at the very least, the least that you can do is publicly respect Black women. At the least. I don't care about who people are sleeping with or what they're doing. You know, I, that's not for me to care about. Um, and I don't claim to be pro-Black either. Um, for, you know, for anyone who cares, uh, because when I thought that I was pro-black, you know, uh, I was told that I wasn't black enough and whatever. So I, I truly don't care. Um, I'm pro me, <laughs> me and my four no more. You know what I mean? I'm pro me. Um, but I'll respect everyone. And that's what I expect for people to do because I do respect people. I expect for people to respect me. Um, I see a lot of things going on with people who claim to be pro-Black, who is weird as shit to me. And so it's not even anything that I want to be tied down to, because in my opinion, in what I have seen as pro-Black circles, Black women are an afterthought. Black women are given the least, treated the worst, and expected to be the work mules in those circles. So it's just not for me. But again, to each his own to each her own. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Hi, Wisdom Speaks, says I remember OG. And hi, uh, you know, I forgot. You told me, is it finesse or finesse? Is it finesse, like finesse, or is it like Denise, but with an F in front? I forgot. You told me and I forgot because I haven't seen you in a while. That's okay. Hey, I love it when y'all are like, hey, I'm late. It's okay. We don't take attendance. We're just having a good time. We're just having a good time. It's okay. Let's see. Uh, hey, Rako. Rachel. Hey, I remember that. And looks like maybe Denise, Dennis, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, another another one is throwing me off. Maybe she's like starting from the beginning. So maybe, but if in case you're not and you're just typing a one, hello, if you can hear us right now. Um, <laughs> yes, Tammy, my fur baby's here with me. Yeah. I might have some exciting news coming up on the fur baby front to deliver to y'all. Uh, let's see here. Okay, like Denise with an F. <laughs> okay, listen, I got it. <laughs> Yeah, Island Island Girl, that's how I feel. Um, that's how I feel. And that's I, I think that I mentioned that at the beginning of this stream as well. Um, and look, I'm hoping there are some people out there who claim to be pro-Black, who care about women and children as well. But for me, being an outsider looking in, being told that I'm, you know, the black girl who's not black enough. And I'm like, you know what? Y'all can have it. Here's my black card. Y'all revoked it. Take it. I know what I am. You know, I don't need a movement for me to be who I am. But, um, but outsider looking in, it does seem to be extremely male centered, extremely male focused. And there are just some things that I heard from people who do profess to be pro-black. And I'm just like, yeah, no, thank you. It's not for me. It's not for me. Oh, gosh. But that's all, you guys. That's it for this one. So thanks for coming and hanging out with me for a little bit. Um, I am working on part two of the Benjamin Guggenheim story. 
his Titanic story, uh, he was on the Titanic with his mistress from France, his French mistress. And, and uh, in part one, I covered his cheating scandal from 1907, where the lady he was cheating with, her husband divorced her and told her, you can't even remarry anyone again. Uh, I'm keeping our son and you go and be a whore <laughs> by yourself. You'll never be able to remarry again. So I'm past his 1907 scandal. It's 1912. I'm on the Titanic with him and his French mistress. And we're going to get to what happens next. And there was even a bit of a scandal about something after he died. Remember, he was one of the richest men on the ship. And just stick a pin in that. Oh my gosh, look, y'all, I love this guy. If you're a shoe freak, I haven't seen him in forever. Check out Colo Culture, Colo Culture. When I first saw his channel, it was years ago, and he was doing um, vlogs, like showing different places in um, Colorado that were really cool to see. But now, like, he's, like, really heavy on the sneaker content, which I'm not a sneaker girl, but I'm a big fan of the way he edits his videos. His editing has always been just super on point, super high quality. Um, this is somebody like to check out, especially if you like shoe content. And you know what? I have an idea. I don't know if it's something that you can do, but I'm not, and I'm not going to say it here just in case there's somebody watching who has a shoe channel who might take the idea. I mean, it's something that I've seen, but I think that like you would be able to like elevate this particular thing if you were to do it on your channel, um, and, and not look like you're copying someone because really you're not because it's actually something that I saw. And I'm like, man, I wonder if he's ever done that. But anyhow, yeah, y'all check out uh, Colo Culture. I'm still subscribed. I'm just always working on my own content. And so I don't get to watch as much YouTube as I used to. But um, I love this channel, y'all. Check him out. Um, actually, actually, I'm going to drop the link. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, y'all have a good evening. Y'all know we're getting ready to sign out. Let me drop the link to this channel before we go. Uh, hold up. Okay. And again, you guys, uh, anytime you come to my channel, y'all know that y'all can promote yourselves. Like that's never been a problem for me. Uh, and people rarely do. And I appreciate that. I think that people are just like, you know, trying to be kind and be, um, you know, uh, polite. And I appreciate that. But it's never a problem. If you have a channel and you want to shout yourself out, let us know what you do in the chat. Oh, now this is funny because y'all know I'm getting ready to sign off. I said when it was going to be. And this is actually the person who requested this content. Now she's here. She's like, I can't believe I missed it. And so it's funny. Yeah. So uh, for that weirdo girl who was like, oh, you just want to take an opportunity to hate on Giselle, which is dumb. Um, I actually did this at the request of one of my viewers. So kiss it. This is for Clarissa. That's why we did it. But that's all I got, y'all. Please uh, go and check out my Titanic content. I'm going heavy on Titanic, y'all. There are so many juicy stories there. Um, but I'm trying to make it like every other video, you know, Titanic, then something else, then back to the Titanic, then something else. So yeah, just go and binge watch my channel. That is your homework assignment. And um, I don't know when I'll be live again until for sure Sunday. If you have a YouTube channel, hey, cosmic uh, carbon to the sun <laughs> goddess. Woo, that's a lot to get out. Hello. Um, so if you have a YouTube channel and you want some tips on how to grow your channel from me, if you like, you know, whatever my delivery, the way I do things, whatever on Sundays, the goal is Sunday at five o'clock PM central standard time that I'll be ready for that stream. I've been a little late, you know, sometimes I was an hour late because I was working on the live stream that comes after that. If I'm on schedule, then at six Oh five, It'll be our 80s music trivia game that, again, Jewel gave me the inspiration for. And we have been fun. We have been fun 
we have been having fun. Well, we have been fun, but we've been having fun playing that. I've uh, been playing it with three contestants. If we can get more, I'm here for it, you know, um, and y'all just come and hang out on Sundays. This is the place to be. And maybe I'll have another piece of um, video content ready for you all to see, an edited piece of content. I don't know. But that's what I'm working on now. Um, y'all have yourselves a good night. I hope that everybody's week is going well. And uh, I'll see y'all soon because I got to get back to work. I'm going to get off of here and get back to writing. Might have me a cup of coffee because I'm feeling a little tired. But that's it, y'all. Do me one favor. Shower the people you love with love. Holler.